It is another session of the Coaching Corner. Nice you could join me again. We're going to discuss whether to act or react. What is the difference between acting and reacting? You know, if somebody says about you when you go to work or an audition, well, I liked him, her, but she looks, he looks like he was acting. That's not a compliment. So what exactly does that mean when, when we say you're acting? means you're indicating, pretending, doing characterizations of someone you know nothing about, stereotyping. That's acting. Now, where does that come from? You know, it comes from the intellect. It's, it's cerebral. So if you are intellectual in your acting, using logic and reasoning, you manipulate behavior which there is no such thing. It's either real behavior or it's manipulation of behavior, fake. Then that's a problem for you. Acting. What causes it? A rationalization of you, the part, the script, all of it together is what causes it. You become logical. All right, what's the first thing you see with? You say your eyes. Well, actually not your eyes, your brain. And we as human beings which of course separates us from the animal world and not the only thing I hope is the fact that we can reason. We have the ability to reason so when we look at a script or dialogue we internalize intellectually first before it goes back to our subconscious. So in that regard when we look at dialogue we're already seeing the scene it's like a movie's playing through your head once you go up to do it because you logically rationally envision what's happening in the scene before it ever happens. And you, of course you don't want that. If you're a person that uses uh, words like moment, react, behavior, then that's not your kind of acting to work logically, cerebrally. Well, where does it come from? See, if you're going to work intellectually, you're going to be a mechanic. It's not the mechanic's entrance at CBS, it's the artist's entrance. So what is, exactly does it mean to be an artist? Well, you're working uh, viscerally. So let's go back for a moment, cerebrally, intellectual, mechanical, rational, logical. You act, you pretend. Because there is nothing in your intellect that has to do with impulses, instincts, and emotion. Where is that? That's in your visceral being, which is where art lives. And you say, well, what, what do you mean art, RJ? Well, it's simple. Why do they call us artists? Because we are visionary. Uh, creativity means that you're doing things that nobody else in the world can do. You see things that nobody else sees. Color blue, red, what a kiss feels like. So in that regard, uh, we are visionary, artistic because we're using the best part of our imagination which comes from the subconscious. Emotion, behavior, impulses are all living in the subconscious. How do you get to it? Well, that's probably one of the reasons why the Meisner technique is so uh, hailed as the wonderful exercise that it is because it, it was based on, on getting one actor to concentrate on another to get your mind off of yourself. What does that mean? You're getting your logical, rational, intellectual mind away from yourself and on to your partner, which leaves you with, voila, the subconscious, your visceral being. So now you're interacting with the other actor and not aware intellectually of how you're doing a scene. The movie's not playing. You're just reacting. And that's where all the surprises are because your impulses live there. Your instincts live there. Now, this character, this is an actor who's very heady. You see a big head. It's a very heady actor. Acts from his intellect. So if you get another actor who works the same way, what you get is you get two actors acting at each other instead of with each other, moment to moment. Or if, if one of them is a visceral actor, then this actor's trying to work from this actor 
who is intellectual, and this actor continues to act at the natural or visceral actor. And so that doesn't quite work out. What you need is two actors who are visceral actors, concentrating on one another and working in the moment, which is the best place to be, right guys? Of course, in the moment. So a lot of actors just use that word as a kind of a cliche. I work in the moment with the other. And you say, well, what does that mean? And they really don't explain it in a way that makes any sense either to you or to them. It's just a word. It's a word they picked up. I work in the moment. Makes you sound very artiste. But in reality, uh, this whole process of working viscerally is where your genius lives in your subconscious, your emotions, behavior. And that's what gives you this wonderful individuality, the artists that work. If you're going to be a thinker, you're going to be a stinker. No question about it. Think your way through your acting, play that movie in your head at the other actor, you're always going to be a bad actor. I don't care what anyone wants to call that drama. It's not drama. I mean, if you put on something that you're not, you lose depth and definition in the character. When you are true to yourself, then you are defining the character on the screen, at least to the audience. Best thing you've got is you. If you don't use that, what have you got? Imitating other things? It's not art imitating art. It's life imitating life. We're living real life. It's, it's fine art in real life situations. That's what we do as actors. So this whole process of the creative source of what you are. Remember, your self-worth as an actor is in who and what you are as a human being, but what you do as an actor is based on what the other actor does to you. Moment to moment to moment to moment to moment. On each take, on each take, you'll do a little something different because of what your partner's doing. Right? Of course. What you do creatively is based on your psychological makeup as a human being. That's what gives you that individuality that separates you from anyone else in the entire world. That's what makes you so unique and so special. And you are. That's why you never give up at this. Because until you come into this business and do you, nobody else is doing you. You're not going to be home watching a movie and saying, hey, somebody, that's me. Who took that part? No, until you step up and do the part, it doesn't exist. You. That's what makes it happen. Now, what about this whole idea of the psychological makeup of you as a human being? It relates to the creative process. The creative process is really unexplainable. You know, many professors and uh, scientists of the study of acting and just human behavior have tried to figure out exactly what is it that make Michelangelo Michelangelo or Picasso Picasso, Renoir Renoir. What, what is it that does that? It's their creative process at work, but it's unexplainable. If you ask them or any great artist, they say, how did you do that? They say, I don't know. I once asked Joel Walsh of the Eagles, name drop, uh, how, he, how he could play a 12-string guitar. I saw, saw him do it in a concert. He said, I don't know, because the creative process is at work. It's, it, he's not playing that guitar intellectually. It's, it's a visceral thing, which is based on instincts, impulse. So it is your psychological makeup as a human being, everything that you are, that makes that creative process work. And again, it's unexplained. You don't know how you're having these impulses and instincts or how you see or feel certain things about life or, more importantly, how you feel emotionally about things. What kicks off your emotions? How come people find it so easy, some actors find it so easy to cry? And others, it's almost impossible, if not impossible. Because in their makeup as a human being, that type of emotion doesn't live. But that's okay. I mean, you don't see uh, Clint Eastwood breaking down and, and call, crying in, in a lot of his films. Or if you remember Charles Bronson, he was always a, a tough guy. You didn't see him. They don't see those 
actors weeping. And, and so, but that's okay. They get the job done. You don't have to be a weeper. People think you have to cry in every scene that you're in. You don't. Yeah, it moves audiences as long as it's real. So remember, if you're going to be a really great actor, and all of us have the capability of doing that. Did you know that? So how do I become a great actor? Work viscerally from the subconscious. And in order to do that, you need to get your attention focused on the other actor. And when you get two actors who play that, magic is made. It's a wonderful thing to watch. And hopefully I'll be able to watch you up there on that screen as long as you don't quit. Keep up the good work. We'll see you next segment here on the Coaching Corner on the Virtual Channel Network. From the Actors Workshop, I'm R.J. Adams.